test, test. Good evening, good evening everyone. Good evening, could I have your attention please? Thank you so much. The fellowship is so sweet tonight to celebrate the life of our dear sister. We're about to begin. If by chance you have not had a chance to view, we will not be viewing at the end of the service. So this would be your time to uh, have your final viewing. And we'll begin in a few moments. Thank you so much.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. He made it. Are you going to rejoice? Even with a heavy heart, we have a choice to rejoice and be glad in it. That's, our, that's your decision. But we've come to lift up the name of Jesus, and we've come to lift up this family. They, our worship will elevate them. If they don't feel like raising their hand when we raise our hand, we cover them. Amen? Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Praise God. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God gathering home, we will tell the story how we over, and we'll understand it better by and by. you to praise if you just think of his goodness over your life. I have my story, but what has he done for you? And just give God a praise right now. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. 
Praise God. Praise God. At this time, we're going to have the reading of the Old and the New Testament. Sister Dee Dee Lartz and Sister Brenda Andrews will come in that order, please. One through seven. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. I'll be reading the New Testament scripture and will be found in John, John chapter 14 and I'll be reading scriptures 1 through 7. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. <laughs> that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thy goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me, unto the Father, but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him, and you have seen him. Thank you. Amen. We thank God. For, we thank God for his word. His word is true. It brings comfort. As much as we try to say the right things, it's the word of God that gives us the comfort we need. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all quiet up in here. This is a home going serve. This woman loved God, she was saved. She's with the Lord. And truly our hearts are heavy, but we have a hope that goes far beyond any grave. And we know we will see her again and it could be a lot sooner than we think. The way things are unfolding today in our world, the Bible is unfolding every single day that we awake. So let's, let's get it together and, and be able to do the right thing and give God his praise. Amen? At this time, we're going to have some remarks from our pastoral staff of Foundation Church. I will start. Pastor Kevin Page will come, Pastor Beverly Caesar, and then our lead pastor, Pastor Roderick Caesar III, will come. So uh, <laughs> my heart is really heavy tonight. It is. Uh, Francine and I go back to Andrew Jackson High School. And um, uh, uh, even when she, before she received the Lord as her savior, she came into this church and our founder was very, uh, one of the principals in her receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, the founder of this church. She loved him so much. And so he was her pastor, then our bishop became her pastor. And then she was able to be pastored by our lead pastor right now. So my head is swimming with the memories and the thoughts, uh, how much I'm going to miss my sister, uh, thank God we were able to talk just about every week and uh, confidants in certain areas of our lives, able to share personal things. And if you know Francine, you know she's funny. And you know she was no nonsense. 
That's why we hit it off so well. No nonsense. You mess with her, you got a problem. Mess with her family, you got a problem. So, you know, I'm just going to miss her voice and talking to her. But in the last couple of years, she really went through some suffering. And to know today that she is at peace, she's with the Lord whom she loved and whom she served, brings me comfort. And then knowing that I will see her again. It just would see how long it takes, but I will see her again, brings me comfort. So, Gerald, and I must say what a husband you have been to your wife. The care you gave her, the care, the care, the care. The care. My God, nothing he, he, nothing he wouldn't do for Francine. And uh, God has honored you and will continue to honor you in the days to come for your certain. You just, you know, we honor, but he just kept his vows. <laughs> Sickness and in health, better or worse, he kept his vows. And he kept them well. And nobody keeps a better record than our Lord Jesus Christ. So I honor you and this family, her sister, her in-laws, all of you are blessed because she came your way. And on behalf of my husband, Pastor John, he could not be here, but he and Francine had their own little friendship. <laughs> and he loved her very much, and she loved him. And he's praying for you even right now as we go through this service. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Brother Gerald and the Lord's family, my condolences go out to you, my brother, and to the family. I knew you from afar. I didn't know you as well as maybe some of the others. But one thing I know is true. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And where Francine is, there is no more suffering. There is no more pain. There's doctors, but they don't need to operate. They don't need to act. They don't need to practice because there's no more sickness. There's no more pain. And we witness today the life of one of God's children, one of his soldiers, entering into the reward. And so tonight I just offer my condolences to you and the family, knowing that Francine is in a place with her Lord and Savior, and she's celebrating tonight. Even though we mourn her, lo her loss, we know that she's celebrating with her Savior, and she's glorifying her God because she's in his presence. Okay, praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Come on, Francine is rejoicing. So I need you to rejoice in the God of her salvation. Amen. Listen, we've been doing this a lot recently or lately, but guess what? One of these days it will be us. And you want people to rejoice at your home going, right? Amen. Now, the Bible tells us that Blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And Francine was his saint who being called unto himself early one Sunday morning. Yes. One Sunday morning he called her home. Francine Whaley Lartz really was a dear friend of mine. I loved her dearly. I loved her spunk. I loved her laughter. I loved her insight. And interestingly enough, she was one of my faithful armor bearers when I would go out to speak in engagements. Let me tell you, she prepared the tapes, the CDs, the books. She came to the office. She got everything, everything organized. And when we got into that van to drive, I had to keep my mind on the word because Francine was cracking us up. We were laughing from the time we started in the van till the time we got home because Francine kept us laughing. She was a bucket of laughs and not just laughed, her forthrightness was very refreshing. She, you know, I, I'm going to miss her very much, sir. Thank you so much for loan, learning, loaning her to me and allowing her to travel with me those many, many times. As a matter of fact, I'll give you this one little story. 
There was a particular church that we visited, and after the service, <laughs> they served us some good food. Good food. So Francine says, Pastor Bev, what are you going to do to, so you can get back to that church? Because I like them fried chicken. The food was so good. She said, I hope they invite you back. That's Francine. That's how she was. So I'm going to be using the letters of her first name to remember my dear friend Francine. The letter F. Friendly, faithful, fresh, and funny. Francine Whaley Lords was certainly not a farce. There wasn't a fake bone in her body. What you saw was what you received, or what she saw was what you received. The letter R, rightly dividing the word of truth. What you got came from her loving and caring heart, wanting to be a part of who you are. F letter A, Fran was always attentive to sharing her personal opinion and remarks through her carefree, infectious laughs. Come on, how many of you enjoyed her laugh? Her laughter, it was amazing. The letter N, negotiation was a plus. As Francine Large sold books and CDs, she negotiated the sales with her wit and her charm. So she would say, you buy two books, I'll get you two CDs. You buy three CDs, I'll get you a book. And everybody said, yes, my dear. Yes, my dear. She was just amazing. The letter C. Auntie Fran, as my children called her, was clever in her communications when she faced opposition. Get back to that. I lost my space. So sorry. The letter C. Auntie Fran, as my children called her, was clever in her communications when she faced opposition. She tried to cause no lasting scars. I, intentional inclusivity was a strength as she endeavored to bring her families together, sharing her thoughts across all parts. So the letter N, let's never forget Never forget her engaging laughs, which was one of her many trademarks. The letter E, earning the earmarks of love, sweetness, truth-telling, and trust were easy as her bite was more painless than her trademark barks. So in conclusion, when I got past those barks, you have to get past her rough exterior because she was a little rough, you know what I mean? Once you got past that, I found a shining, beautiful star that brought forth a skylark. So fly away, beautiful brown skylark, and sing as you fly above the cave. I was honored to have known you, my dear, beautiful Francine Whaley Larch. I will see you in eternity. So, Gerald, my dear sir, family and friends, treasure the precious moments that you had with her, the times you spent with Francine, because one glorious day, if you know her Savior, we will be reunited together in eternity forever. Our condolences to you, sir, and the family. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Foundation. Praise the Lord, uh, praise the Lord everyone. Um, I just want to send my condolences on behalf of my wife, Stephanie, and I. Our deepest condolences to our brother, Gerald, and to the family and loved ones of our dear sister, Francine. Um, I pray that uh, we would all remember in this time of grief, in this time of bereavement, in this time of mourning, uh, that God is walking with us through this valley, and that we would feel the prayers of our, our loved ones, feel the prayers of our Foundation Church family, in this season of grief. As I reflect on uh, Sister Francine, Auntie Fran, um, she always had a kind word and a greeting for myself and for my wife, always greeted us warmly. Uh, she would always dote on our children and show such wonderful expressions of love. Uh, and I'm grateful for her. Uh, she was, as my mother said, a brilliant star. Um, she was a vibrant woman who lived life with style live life with humor, uh, with grace, and with pizzazz. 
Uh, she had a beautiful sense and understanding of who she was and wasn't afraid to let that be shown regardless of how you felt about it. Um, and in her final years, I, I do believe that she showed everyone here, everyone that knew her, as her star was burning out, that she trusted God even in her affliction. As she lay in her bed of affliction, she continued to trust God and hold on to him. And so I pray that as we, uh, in our time, whenever our time comes, uh, that we would take a page from her book and hold on to God's unchanging hand. Uh, I'm grateful to have known her. I'm grateful to have uh, been a witness to the example of uh, what, a, what a godly woman looked like who wasn't afraid to be herself. Um, and then also, I was also privileged to see the enduring love that she and Gerald shared um, in their time of marriage. Um, so please know everyone that uh, your Foundation Church family is praying for you, praying with you in this time. And let's all walk knowing that God, wi God will continue to comfort us in this time of, of grief and of loss. So, uh, Sister Francine, thank you so much for everything. I love you dearly. Rest well. God bless. Amen. Say amen for our pastor. Amen. amen. At this time, we're going to have a nice surprise. It's not a surprise, but praises is in the house. Hello, somebody. And, who, and really, whoever sang at some point in time, come on up here and sing. We rehearsed so much, we didn't need a rehearsal for tonight. Amen. Gerald sang in the choir. Francine made a joyful noise, so she didn't join the choir. But Gerald could sing. Gerald sang with everybody. Marshall Carpenter is here. Professor Alex Barrett is here. Dr. Eugene Harrison is here. Everybody's back for Francine. Come on over, daughter. Come on over. Come on over. Yes. Isn't this wonderful? But, uh, and uh, Pastor Ronnie Dean is here from Charlotte. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Call him out, Marsh. If you see anybody, call him out. Okay, let's see. Get Auntie Jean, come on up here. Yes. John, you're not late. Come on, John. Yes. Jane, I see Jane. Come on, Jane. Come on. Come on. Thank you. See? Obedience. See, she, 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 I have to call, call. Okay, let's see. Who's that? Derek? Come on, Derek. Come on. Come on. Let me see. Who else? Pastor Vicky. Who's that?
oh yes, oh yes. I can call him when I need him. When I need him. Hallelujah. I can go to God in prayer. Oh yes, oh yes. Listen, that's as, that's as real today as it was in the 60s and the 70s when we sang that song right up in here in this church right here. Teenagers singing for God, living for the Lord. And we still look good too. Come on. We all got AARP cards, but we happy. Hello, somebody. Happy. Get those discounts. Yes, God. Amen. We're going to have some select um, remarks from a few of her girlfriends that are here. Amen. Y'all pray for Gerald, saints. Continue to cover him. Uh, Brenda Andrews is going to come. Jean Legrand is going to come. Amen. Spent special time with Francine. It's really hard. It's really, this is really difficult. But our God is able. He keeps us going. He keeps us going. His word is true. He's a comforter. And he keeps us going. Amen. I met Franny. I met Franny here at Bethel Gospel Tabernacle, now Foundation Church. We served on the usher board. I was the co-captain of the fourth Sunday ushers, along with Marie Gilliam, who has since moved to Florida. And Franny was a captain of the second Sunday ushers. Well, you know, we helped each other out on Sundays, each other Sundays, and Franny always wanted to make sure she had enough ushers. So she would call you, you know, are you, are you sure you're gonna make it, Brenda? But now when she called me, she would call me seven o'clock in the morning on the way to work. I said, Franny, why you call me so early? I don't want you to forget, I'm not gonna forget. But not only me, she would call other ushers and we would come in here, each post would be filled. This post, the middle post, the back post, under the balcony, up in the balcony, we would be so annoyed with her because most of us had to sit down because she would be overflowing. That's just how Franny was. She wanted to make sure she had enough ushers. Um, you know, I go way back to when we used to go out. Of course, we shopped. I'm going back to the days of Alexander's on, yes. Alexander's on Queens Boulevard. You know, and, 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 and we're going in the store and we're going down the escalator. As we're going down the escalator, we're hearing all this noise, these kids running up and down. Well, you know, Franny, whether you're an adult or a kid, if she's gonna say something, she's gonna say. So these kids were running up and down. Franny goes over to the kids, hey, stop all that running in here. What's wrong with y'all? Where's your mama? Where's your mama? If you bust your head in here, you would want to sue. Where's your mama? So by then, the kids looked at her, and they wanted to get away from this crazy lady. And by then, the mom came, and they looked at Franny, and Franny looked at the mom. No one said anything. They just went on away, you know? That's just how Franny was, you know? Another memorable story. Um, Vicki Douglas and I took her out for one of her birthdays. We decided to do a spa day at the Red Door Spa at the Garden City Hotel at the time. And we did head to toe, facial, massage. And when we finished, you know, we went to make sure the bill was paid and everything. Franny's coming out of her pocket. So no, Franny, we're treating you. This is your birthday. Oh, 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 oh. She's crying with, oh, Franny, oh, no. Franny, it's okay, you know, heart of gold. Heart exterior, heart of gold. After that, we went out to lunch. We ordered and everything, the bill came. She's going in her pocket again. Franny, we got this. <laughs> oh, why didn't you? <laughs> heart of gold, heart of gold. You know, I'm, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss my sister girl. You know, we had so many talks, even in her days when she wasn't feeling well at the hospital, on the phone. You know, we would pray, talk, and she, she still was crazy and, and, and you know, 
She still would say some stuff. I said, Franny, no, you did not just say that. She'd go, oh, yes, I did. <laughs> you know, and we just, we just had a good time. And she would say, Brenda, I just can't wait to get back to myself. I just can't wait to get back. You know, so I can do the things I used to do. I wouldn't have to depend on anybody. You know, she said, Gerald, you know, bless his heart. He's trying, bless his heart, you know. He, you know, cooked for me, you know, bathed me. He's good. You know, he, she loved you, Gerald, you know. And so I said, Franny, God is a healer. You, you'll, be, you'll be back. You'll be back to yourself. And, uh, and she is. She's whole now. No more dialysis. No more insulin. No more diabetes. You know, she's back to herself. She's in the arms of her Lord and Savior. And I'm going to miss my sister girl. Gerald, I love you, my brother. Ronnie, sister girl, you have my number. Family, Dee Dee, family, the rest of you, love you guys. We're praying for you. Thank you. What can I say? It's been a bad week for me. I got up this morning, I didn't think I was gonna make it. Good thing I had my medic alert on. I didn't even know where I was. I ended up in, I ended up in Long Island Jewish Hospital. I was completely dehydrated. I was falling all over. Just got back to come here now. My equilibrium was off, but God is good. I couldn't let this opportunity pass. I didn't want to rain on anything that would... This is her day. I met Fran in 1978. She was a friend of my husband at Rochdale Tennis Club. And that's how I got to meet her. And she has been one of my greatest friends ever since. We would go shopping. <laughs> I was the oldest one and I considered myself the queen. And all you all that know me know that I'm sort of bossy and pushy. And I'm in charge. And it was a few of us. We would shop all day long. And then she would get home just in time before Gerald got home. <laughs> but as the years went on, I wanted her to be an usher. And I was president of the usher board. So I trained her well. We had some good times. She was the captain of the second Sunday. And like Brenda said, she wanted to have more ushers than anybody else. And then when Fran met Gerald, I insisted that I would take over the preparations of the wedding. I didn't want to give the family anything at all. But I couldn't get past Ronnie. Ronnie was in charge. And they had one of the most gorgeous weddings you would ever see. September 20th, 1986, in my backyard. It was gorgeous. And I always think, and we have had beautiful fellowship all down through the year. 
I miss her already, love her, but when I think of the, everything that she has done, been with me through, I, all the pictures I have, I can't help but just be happy and laugh and say, she made it before I did. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everyone that came. Friend, she's my friend, she's your friend. It has been very hard for me. But most of you all don't know, I had stage three colon cancer. But God brought me through. And Fran was right there with me. And I'm so thankful that he allowed me. And I just celebrated my 85th birthday. And my church here, my bishop, I love Pastor Bear. You dressed me when I got married. Yes, you did. And bitch, I've known you all. I came in here in 1957. And thank God, I'm still here. And I love it. I love each and every one of you. And when I look around, all of you all that came through, look at Marshall and Sheila. And a lot of you all, I directed your weddings and your receptions and things. And I'm still here. I'm not able to do much anymore, but I'm happy. God bless you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Let's say amen for the girlfriends. Amen. amen. I was told we have a special guest, a good friend of uh, Brother Gerald, uh, Bishop Todd Hall is here. And we would invite you to come and give some remarks, sir. Is that you? Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good evening. Now, I didn't plan on talking, so I don't know where he got this from. A uh, friend belongs to y'all, but I was her internet pastor. She watched me every Sunday and every Wednesday, and she would call me every week and say, boy, you're getting me saved all over again. We definitely got Gerald saved. It took a little while. <laughs> Gerald's a different uh, situation. But I know they love one another. Gerald called me, and he can't get through a phone call without speaking in tongues. Talking about he trusts God with his wife. She's in the best hands ever. I'm going to miss her, but she's no longer sick. You never know how much you love a person until they're gone. But the way you let them live is in the life you have left. I want to tell a little story. Don't play no music, Sean. We ain't trying to have no church. I just want to testify. I um, had a cell phone when they first had a phone called Nextel. Anyone remember those phones? Yeah, and they used to drop a lot. They used to drop a lot. Cause, and uh, my phone, I upgraded my phone. Then my phone started dropping a lot again. So I took the phone and I called the maker of the phone, which was Nextel, who became Sprint. I'll be done in a moment. And they said to me, have you tried turning the phone off and cutting it back on? I said, uh, yes. They said, we want to give you a soft reset. They said, hold for three seconds. It will reset itself. And if it doesn't work, then we'll tell you something else to do. I then, Walter Davis, gave it a hard reset. But before they told me to do that, they said, do you have everything that you love and need? Do you have it on backup? I said, no. They said, well, you better get to a computer because we want you to keep everything you need by backing it up on another system. They said, that is your contacts, 
your photos, any important texts you may have, back it up. So I backed it all up, and then they turned around and said, now we're going to hard reset your phone. I said, okay, and I hard reset. The phone lost everything it had, came back on. They said, now try to download what you backed up, and I did, and the phone went off. And they said to me, we have a problem, but we can fix it. I said, what's the problem? They said, your phone is dead, but none of the information shall be lost. And I'm here to tell Gerald and the family that these were the words they told me. They said, we're going to send you a new phone for the same information. They said, but for that phone, put it in a box and ship it home. And if you didn't back up everything Fran said, everything she did, keep all the memories, all the contacts, all the numbers. All this is right now is an empty phone. And the Lord said, tell you all is well. Just put it in the box and ship her home. All is well. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. That's what Francine would say. No more change holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, yes. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Do you all know that? I am free. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more change holding me. My soul is resting. Hallelujah. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. One last time, everybody. Sing it, sing it. I am free. Oh, yes, I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Oh, yes, it is. It's just a blessing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, he's worthy. Praise, praise the Lord. He's worthy of the praise. Praise the Lord. He's worthy tonight. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Come on and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Give him a praise. Is that your best praise? Hallelujah. Freedom, freedom, hallelujah to God. We praise, that's what Francie would say right here. If she was here, she's free. She's better off than we are, all this stuff going on down here. Jesus. At this time, her loving sister, Veronica Walters, is going to come and read the obituary. Let's say amen for her as she comes. Would you prefer to stay down there? Okay. Uh, could you pass the mic, please? Thank, thank you. I um, speak about the obituary. I just wanted to say Francine was no stranger to church. Our first church that we went to was First Church of God. That's right here in Jamaica. I can't remember exactly where it was because I was around the corner. Yeah, okay. I was, there's a difference. There's eight years difference between Francine and I. And her first cousin, Eddie, Bishop Eddie White, is the Bishop of Greater Zion out here in Queens again. So this is a religious family 
And that's all she talked about was church. Church, 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 church. And shopping, of course. You know that. Anyway, my sister was my older sister. She exposed me to Alatunji. She told me all about the village because she was hanging out tough in her early, well, her older teen years, hanging out in the village, telling me about what was going on, and I'm listening, and I want to get grown and be out there too. And I remember sneaking in her closet, taking her clothes, and wearing them to school, and her shoes, and whatever I could put my hands on, jewelry, you name it, I did it. Um, she taught me a lot of first things. She gave me my first piece of gold jewelry. <sighs> she used to make me um, smashed up bananas with milk on Saturday mornings. Yeah, these are some of the things. I'm not gonna keep going on and on because I could, but I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna read the obituary now. Francine Whaley Lartz was born to Bob and Lily Whaley on July 1st, 1946 in Harlem, New York. She was the first born to this union. Her sister Elaine died of pneumonia at age 12 months. While living in Harlem, Fran attended a nearby school until 1958. By this time, her parents were divorced and her mother was remarried to John Walters. From this union, Veronica Ronnie Walters was born. At age 12, she and the family moved to St. Albans, Queens. She then attended junior high school 59 and worked in her parents' grocery store. In 1960, her parents sold the store and moved to Hollis, Queens. This is when she attended and graduated from Andrew Jackson High School. While there, she met Roderick Caesar II, now bishop, Beverly Caesar, now pastor, longtime friends Verlin and Veronica Fields. After graduating Andrew Jackson in 1964, she began her first job at Sterling Drugs as a receiving clerk. Two years later, she left and worked as a teller for Bankers Trust. It was around this time she met William Snodgrass, who was serving in the U.S. Armed, Armed Air Force. They married in 1968 and lived in Texas for a period of time. After two years, they divorced, and Fran moved back to Cambria Heights and lived with her family. It was at this time she began working at Philip Morris, the tobacco company, in the corporate accounting department. While there, she became good friends with Aswini Prasad. Eventually, Fran saved enough money to move to Rochdale Village. At some point, she decided to join the Rochdale Road Runners Club. Rochdale had so many benefits for her, one of which was transportation. The express bus was a godsend. It was on the e-bus that she met longtime friend Janice Officer and Pat Turner. Pat Turner invited her to Bethel, renamed Foundation Church in 2021. Fran accepted the invitation and hasn't stopped going since. It was just what she needed at the time. She couldn't resist becoming a member, so she did in 1979. As a member, she was an usher, captain of the second Sunday usher, armor bearer, and altar worker. In fact, Fran would not hesitate if asked to do something for the church. She rolled up her sleeves and said, let's do this. In addition to her church life, she also worked as a name finder for the Board of Elections and, and proctor at St. John's University. She enjoyed the company of her church sisters, Maxine Goodridge, B. Carr, and Sister Figgins. However, her shopping posse were Jean Legrand, <laughs> Janice Logan, and Brenda Robinson, AKA the Notorious Four. On December 31st, 1984, Fran had a near-death experience, a diabetic coma. It was around this time she gave her heart to the Lord. In 1985, she was introduced to her husband, Gerald Lartz, by his friend Kenny Boo Hector. After one year of courtship, they married on 9-20-86. Throughout the years, Fran and Gerald stuck by each other despite health and marital challenges. They both took their marriage vows seriously, and being saved played a big part. 
Fran had type 1 diabetes, which progressively got worse in her senior years. These last couple of years have been the most challenging. She lost the majority of the use in her hands and had difficulty walking. Even with this happening to her, she stayed steadfast in her faith. When she had an okay day, she would do whatever she could around the house. Although her husband faced several serious health issues as well, he took care of Fran. He monitored her sugar levels, gave injections, took her to dialysis, doctor's appointments, cooked, showered, and countless of other things. On September the 3rd at 7.30 a.m., her husband found her sleeping and knew she went from labor to rest. Fran often spoke of so many people in her building that helped her by praying, listening, doing, and caring. They are people like Brenda Jackson, oh gosh, Tanya, Stella, Sita, Wanda, Samantha, Keisha, and Stephanie. Fran's homecoming will be celebrated by Lartz, Walters, White, Barber, House, Officer, Marshall, Reese, Fields, Clark, Robinson, LeGrand, and many unnamed relatives as well as friends. God bless all those who were there for Francine and Gerald. Amen. Thank you. May the works I've done, the psalm says, speak for me. Then another one says that my living shall not be in vain, and certainly her living has not been in vain. Just quickly as the program says, I'm going to acknowledge the condolences and strictly acknowledge them. And Gerald can read them in the privacy of his home. We have acknowledgments from Bishop Caesar and Pastor Bev Caesar, the Foundation Church family, the lead Pastor Rod and First Lady Stephanie Caesar, the executive team and trustee board, Claire Collins Newton, the local Mission Street Ministry, Deacon Theodore Rogers, the men's ministry, Pastor John Sherrod, Life Relational Ministry, Pastor John Sherrod, Missions Department, Pastor Kevin Page, Spiritual Mothers, Mother Arlene Boyce, the Usher Board, Sister Sandra Thompson and Diane Walker, the Women's Ministry, First Lady Stephanie Caesar, 6 a.m. and All Night Prayer, Pastor Beverly Caesar, Arts and Christian Theater, Pastor Beverly Caesar, Bethel Bible Institute, Pastor Beverly Sherrod, in that order. At this time, our choir is coming back. And after that, the next voice you hear will be that of our eulogist, Bishop Roderick Caesar. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. It is always a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord in good times and in bad times. We have a tendency in the struggles and the vicissitudes of life to wonder where is God. We've been spoiled. We tend to think that everything we want we should get. And when God doesn't come through like we expect him to, we feel that God has done us a disservice. But I want you to know this. He's still God. And he doesn't need your permission to be God. And the blessings of God really should be relegated to life, health, and strength. The fact that God has blessed us with a reasonable portion of health and strength. He's given us life in which to rejoice and to give him thanks and to give him praise. And if that's all he does for you, that's, that's enough. Because all he does for you, you can't do for yourself. You need somebody. And who better than the Lord himself? I've known Fran since uh, Andrew Jackson as well. We didn't run together, but we hung together every now and then. We, we had common friends that brought us together. But my, my real connection with uh, Fran was when she came to Bethel and her coming was a process. She came and went wherever she would go to do whatever she would do. And when she was in trouble, she'd come here. And my father was the one who stood in the gap for her. She would call him all hours of the day and night. And he would have time to encourage her and to help her to cultivate a walk with the Lord. When you think of things of that nature and you look back over uh, your life and the lives of those that uh, are serving and have served the Lord, all you can do is give God thanks because he, he doeth all things well. I'll give you my friend's story, then the message. One Sunday, there was a little commotion in the back of the church over in this corner. It was before service began, and I sensed that something was wrong. So I started to make my way over to that section of the church. When I got there, I heard a heated discussion between Fran and another usher. And it wasn't going very well. <laughs> so I began to interrupt. And the point that I really interrupted at was when Fran invited her outside. <laughs> she said, we can take care of this right now. Let's go outside. And you know, the jewelry coming off. I said, Fran, take it easy. Now, the sister that she was challenging said, well, let's go. <laughs> and I could see it was really out of control. So I broke them up, sat them down, told them they could not serve until this situation was fully addressed. Fran said to me after church, I'm glad you came because she, she would have beat me. <laughs> but Fran was not going to back down. She was not going to be uh, labeled as a coward or anything else. That was, that was the friend that I knew. She was quite a person. And I thank God that I had an opportunity to know Fran and to uh, work with her and to see what God could make out of somebody who would give him a chance. Just give me a second, y'all. Technology always messes you up when you think you got it together. Okay. You know, years ago, when uh, you would uh, be called upon to preach a funeral, you had to go and try to create an epic because you would be graded or judged according to how you performed. But performance is over. 
It's not about performance now. It's about giving God some glory and giving God some honor, giving God some praise. And I've often said the greatest sermon that can be preached is the life you live. I've heard preachers try to preach folk into heaven who didn't deserve to get there. And many times we do a disservice to the pulpit, to the pew, to the people, and ultimately to Christ when we try to make something that never was. So if you knew Fran, you knew she loved the Lord. But you know, Fran was a lot like you and me. You know what that is? We all have struggles. Some people hide their struggle and act like they just came down from the mountain with the tablets of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Other people will say, I tripped going up the mountain. I tripped coming down. But all along my journey, I found the Lord to be an ever-present help in my time of trouble. And that's where Fran was. She knew where her, her help came from. And she knew her help came from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And on the strength of that, she knew she would make it. And I'm encouraged by the life that she lived and by the testimony of the witness that she presented. Fran, with all of her challenges, was a greater witness than some folk who walk around here deep looking like they just came from a personal encounter with God. Fran would say, I got my struggles, but God is able. And she always gave God the glory, the honor, and the credit. And for this, I give God thanks. Well, I just want to take you through a couple narratives of why we are going to be giving God thanks. Heavenly Father, for the next few moments of time, I pray that you would quicken the word to our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our will to be subject to yours in obedience. Thank you for the life that Fran lived before us as a true example of a person striving to make it in. We thank you that you received her, and she received you into her life as Lord and Savior. She lived the life before all of us as a witness and testimony that God can save and keep those who put their trust in him. As you've called her from labor to reward, she's in your presence today. She's in a better position than we are. We are fighting to overcome, and she has already overcome. We are still in the church militant, and she's already in the church triumphant. And what we need to do, Lord, and encourage us and help us to follow her example as she lived the godly life that brought glory and honor to your name. I pray that you'll encourage the family, strengthen them, and enable them to know that their best is yet to come. As we walk by faith and not by sight, we put our trust and confidence in God because the word of God says, you know the way that we take. And after our trials, we come forth as pure gold. So this process of purification, Lord, is what we need. Encourage us to receive it, and we'll thank you for the end as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We should each and every day of our lives express gratitude for God's presence and the opportunities that he gives us to worship him. We make a big mistake when we choose to worship when we want to. We need to learn how to worship the Lord each and every day and throughout the day. Worship is not just coming to church, singing a song, clapping your hands, and putting in a shout and going about your business. Worship is a lifestyle. We entertain the presence of God each and every day, and that is an act of worship. The significance of giving God thanks cannot be overlooked because without God, where would we be? He's the one who wakes us up in the morning, not the clock. He's the one who regulates the pattern of our day. He keeps us clothed and in our right mind so that we can lift our hearts and voices to him in praise and in thanksgiving. So we need to thank God for salvation. And I'm thankful that Fran thanked God for the salvation he ministered to her. She had a life of thankfulness. When Fran was in trouble, she knew where to go. She went to the rock of her salvation. And she put her trust in God that he would bring her out and give her a witness and a testimony. And she testified to those who would listen that it was Christ in the life who truly made the difference. So she's an example for us to follow in giving God thanks for salvation. If the Lord did nothing more than save you, he did enough. 
We are living in a materialistic age where people judge their relationship with God based upon the material attainments they have in life. You have a nice car, you're blessed and highly favored. You got a whoopty, you don't pray enough. Or you don't do this, that, or the other enough. If you don't bedeck yourself with jewels and the finest of clothing, you're not possibly blessed and highly favored of the Lord. But you know, if you live long enough, there's one thing you learn. You got to leave all that behind. You can't take it with you. So the one thing you can take with you is the richness of the relationship that you've cultivated with the Lord. And today, Fran is enjoying the benefits of eternal fellowship with Christ. And for this reason, we celebrate her life and we emulate her and follow her as she followed Christ. Number two, we give God thanks for his provision. The provision of God goes beyond anything that we can comprehend. We think we work for the things that we possess. But if God did not clothe us with a mind and give us an opportunity to serve in the various capacities we do in our employment, we wouldn't be where we are today. We tend to think that we got where we are because we're so smart, so cunning, so creative, so uh, aggressive in our networking that uh, we made a way for ourselves to get where we are. But such is not the case. We are where we are today because God has provided for us. And he said he would provide for all of our need according to his riches and glory. The provision of God comes about in many different ways. It's not always where we just got to get up from the altar and the blessing is waiting for us at the doorstep. There are many things that God wants to provide for you, but he wants to do it his way. And we need to learn that God's way is always the best way. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And what we need to understand is when God chooses to bless us, nobody can take the blessing. Now, you can give it up, but nobody can take it from you. So we can celebrate the fact that God has given us good provision. For all the years that he gave uh, Francine life and a reasonable portion of health and strength, he provided for her all that she needed. One songwriter said, all I have needed your hand has provided. Great is your faithfulness. And God is faithful. He's faithful to keep his promise. And if God makes a promise to you, believe it's going to happen. And we have to believe it's going to happen because the thing that creates the synergy to bring it into reality is faith. The word of God says without faith it's impossible to please him. Those who come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith does not come automatically. It's the application of faith when we put our trust in God rather than in man. And when we believe what God has promised to do for us, then we open the floodgates for the blessing of God to, bestow, to be bestowed upon us. And when God blesses us, he blesses us so that he can show us off to the world and let the world know that he knows how to care for those who belong to him. And Francine was one who did not mind showcasing the blessings of God in her life. And for this reason, we thank God today. The word of God tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, God will supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. And I've often said the need of life is not jewelry, real estate, cars, money. The need of life is food, raiment, and shelter. God said he will provide all of our need not needs. And for this reason, we thank God for the blessings, no matter how simple they may be. Don't ever get into the rut of judging or assessing your blessing next to somebody else's. Whatever way God chooses to bless you, be satisfied with it. Amen. Instead of saying, oh, you gave them this, and this is what you got for me. Because many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, if God blessed us like he does other people, we wouldn't be in church. I've known people who were faithful till they got a car. <laughs> then they backslid. Faithful till they get a house. Yeah. Then on Sunday they can't go to church because they got to mow the lawn. They got to filter the pool. They got to take care of that house, that blessing. And if you need three jobs to pay for it, it's not a blessing. <laughs> if you need three jobs to pay for it, that is your good intentions toward yourself. <laughs> because when God blesses you, he gives it to you. And he gives the best gifts to those who leave the choice to him. 
you, you know, years ago, people who didn't pay their car note would hide the car down the block in the neighbor's backyard. But today, every car you buy got GPS in there. They know where you hide it. And on top of that, they can shut it down while you're driving. With the technology of today, you can't hide the blessing. So make sure it is a blessing so that you don't have to back it up and make excuses for why the blessing is not continuing. Can, can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Fran was real. She was honest. She was truthful. And I appreciated that about her. We should also give God thanks for his unchanging nature. The word of God in James chapter 1 and verse 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like sifting shadows. God is unchanging. If God tells you he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Have you ever in your life pushed the limits with God by being disobedient when God tells you to do something? I've been there. And I learned this. When God has had enough of your foolishness, he knows how to get your attention. He knows how to set the record straight and to get you back to where you need to be. There were times in Fran's life when we would speak and she would share with me a struggle or challenge that she was having. And when we prayed, the one thing that Fran was always willing to do was commit that way to God. And she would articulate by God's grace and with God's help, I'm going to make it. She put her trust and her confidence in God. God's nature does not change. If God says a thing is to be a certain way, that's the way it's going to be. If God says no, he means no. And if you try to change God's mind, it's only going to be to your demise. We have to learn to put our trust in God and walk by faith, not by sight. I thank God that God is unchanging in his character and he's faithful in all of his promises. You may not live to see the fullness of the promises of God, but because you didn't see it doesn't mean it won't come true. God will, in the fullness of his time, manifest uh, uh, a fulfillment of the promise he made to you. I've seen situations where parents prayed for their children and the children did not come to Christ in the lifetime of the parent. But I've seen them come because God made a promise and God kept his word. The unchangeableness of him allows us to know what God has spoken into our lives he's going to bring to pass in the fullness of his time. And we can have confidence in the fact that God's nature doesn't change. See, God's not like us. When you tick me off, I can retaliate in some way. I can exercise my options. I can make a phone call, try to make your life miserable. There are things I can do to retaliate when you don't do what I expect you to do. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, but God's not like that. God knows what was, what is, and what shall be. It's already fixed in eternity. What we need to do is learn that God doesn't change and what God has declared or decreed a thing to be, that's what it has to be. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. When we get to that point, then we can just sell out to God completely and know that the best of our lives is yet to come. When we look death in the face, death is known as the last enemy of life. Because the one thing you have absolutely no control over is death. God gives life. God takes life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When we come to the end of our journey, the only thing that will matter is what we've done with Jesus. Nothing else will matter whatsoever. It won't matter what your address was. It won't matter who you hooked up with. It won't matter the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the jewelry you possess, the vacations you took. The only thing that will matter is what you did with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Fran came to that realization a long time ago. She saw many of her friends go the way of the world. 
Many died outside of Christ and many went to be with the Lord. So she had an opportunity to assess her life in the light of the lives of those that she encountered and saw the decisions they made and the end result of their life. She used those as markers to make the right decisions for herself. We need to do some of the same thing. And we need to see to it that we make the right choice. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And he is today our ever-present help in our trouble. He will do for us what nobody else can possibly do. He will save us. He will empower us. He will keep us. And one day the Lord will present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. Faultless with all of our flaws. Faultless with all of our idiosyncrasies. Faultless because he paid the price and shed his blood upon our lives. We accepted him and received him. And on the strength of that and that alone, we can be confident that we're the children of God. I'm closing with this thought. David was noted in scripture as a man after God's own heart, wasn't he? David was jacked up. David had some real challenges. But the thing that endeared him to God was he was an honest man. He he didn't pull any punches. He was honest with God and honest about his life. And God will bless us and deliver us when we are honest. When we are willing to confess to him where we really are. Because we look so nice coming to church. You know, pre-pandemic, Church was a fashion show. Folks would come to church decked and dance until you almost had to sit them down. But the pandemic did something to a whole lot of people. It put the rubber on the road. And when we come to church now, it's not about fashion. It's about purpose. It's about connecting with our purpose and connecting with our Christ and giving him an opportunity to work in us and with us to willing to do of his good pleasure. The challenge for us is to get ready because we could be next. Songwriters said, count the years as months. Count the months as weeks. Count the weeks as days. Any day now, we'll be going home. And if you listen to the news and you read the headlines, folks are leaving here wholesale. And there's not all old folks young, strapping, healthy men who engage in sports, who get a triple-A rating for their health and for their abilities, are dropping dead. The beautiful people, the models, walking the runways all over the world, are dying in their 20s and 30s. Titans of business and industry, who've accumulated great wealth and great power, are dropping left and right. It's time to get down to serious business and seek the Lord while he may be found. The challenge for us is to get ready, get ready, get ready. Let's bow our heads for just a minute. If you're here today and you are not surrendered to the Lord, you've not committed your way to Christ, There's something you can do about it. You can prepare to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and give him an opportunity to redeem you from destruction. See, the Bible says we were all born in sin. We were shaped in iniquity. I've often said nobody had to learn how to sin. We were born sinners. We sin because it's the nature that we have at birth. It's not until we come to Christ that we become a new creation. And coming to Christ is not coming to the church. Hell is going to be full of good church people. Folk who went to church but never came to Christ. What you need to do is take an assessment of your life, where you are, where it is, where your life is at this point. And if you can honestly say you are prepared to meet the Lord, 
if death should overtake you, even before this night is over, then I guess everything's all right. But if you have to question whether or not you would make it to heaven, you need to eliminate the question by making a certainty of your calling and your election. And if you have not done that, if you are procrastinating, it's too late for procrastination. You've got to do something right now. Be honest with yourself and acknowledge your need. Believe today that Jesus, the Son of God, is the only one who can atone for your sins. And be willing to confess it. For the word of God says, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And if we confess our sins, the Lord God is faithful and he is just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you are not ready to go to heaven, get ready right now. Would you be honest enough to raise your hand and say, please pray for me? Not to join the church, but I, I, I want to make sure that when I close my eyes, heaven will be my final destination. Just slip your hand up and say, pray for me. That's all I'm going to do, nothing more. Anywhere in the auditorium. I'm not ready to die. I'm not ready to go to heaven, but I want to be ready. God bless you, I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? God bless you, I see that hand over there. Anyone else? It's too late to play games. It's too late to be religious. We need to be redeemed. Anybody else? I'm closing. I want to give you this final opportunity. If you're here today, God has spoken to you. What a blessing that Francine, in her departure, has trophies to give to God at her homegoing service. Lives that have been changed and transformed by the power of God. I'm going to pray now for those of you who raised your hand. And if you believe what I said is true, then give God the affirmation of a yes and a surrender. And he'll do the rest for you. He said, he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. He's here to receive you into the joyous family of God through the salvation experience. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we've had tonight to come together and to celebrate the life of a godly woman who touched us in many ways. Thank you for the opportunity, even at this final moment in this service, after receiving a portion of encouragement from the Word of God. There are a number of people who raised their hands for salvation. I pray right now that you would forgive them of their sins. By faith, let them know that there's forgiveness. I pray that as they confess their sins to you, you'll cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Create within them a clean heart and give them a right spirit. Purify their thoughts so that Satan will no longer have that as a weapon against them. And we thank you for not only giving them this opportunity, but giving them the affirmation that salvation has taken place in their lives. Give them a hunger and thirst for righteousness so that they will only want for themselves what you want for them and give them the joy of the Lord as their strength and as their help. And for doing it, for saving them, for redeeming them, for transforming them and making them sons and daughters of God, we glorify you and we give you thanks and we give you praise. For we ask it in the name of Jesus and with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. And amen. Saints, let's give God some praise. For those, of you, for those of you who raised your hand, there are just three things you have to do to make today's decision last. Number one, every day, spend some time with God in prayer. And remember and recognize that prayer is not monologue. It's dialogue. After you've spoken to God, you get still and quiet before him and let him speak to you. Yes. Read the word of God, number two, because it's a lamp unto your feet, it's a light unto your path. That's his love letter to his bride. If you read the word of God, it will teach you how to live a holy and a godly life that will honor him and glorify him. And the third thing you've got to do is find a church where the word of God is preached. But there's a concern for your soul, not for your wallet. Not for your talent, but for your soul. Be nurtured and discipled. And if you will pray, if you will read the word, if you will connect to that body of Christ, 
I can assure you that today's decision will last throughout the countless ages of eternity. God bless you, Gerald and family. We stand in solidarity with you. We've been here before for other people. Now it's for us. And the God of all comfort will comfort you. And there's nobody around. He will sustain you when you feel unsustainable. He'll be the lifter of your head. He'll give you reason to rejoice even in the face of your great tragedy in life. And weeping only endures for a night. We all have a different night, time-wise, but joy comes in the morning. Put your trust in God, walk by faith. And if you need us, we're right here for you. God bless you is my prayer. Funeral director. Bishop, I just have one thing before they come. Yes. We thank God for that wonderful eulogy that the Lord used our bishop. Let's say amen. Amen. I failed to read a very important condolence from the Truth Center. The senior pastor is Dr. Keith Pettis, First Lady Barbara Pettis, who is sister to Gerald, and I would not want the evening to go without acknowledging their lovely condolence that you can read in the privacy of your home. Funeral directors, you can come at this time, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Good evening, everyone. Sister Ferson, Lords will be led to us tomorrow morning at Pylon Memorial Park in Farmingdale, New York. For those of you attending the cemetery, please meet the family at J. Foster Phillips Funeral Home, 179-24 on Linden Boulevard at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, please. Thank you. Going to have our recessional, the foundation ministers and pastors can line up, please, behind Pastor Rod. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone, please stand. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And everyone who believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. You may not grieve as others do that have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of the command, with the voice of the archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, will, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. He who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he also said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water, life without payment. To the one who conquers will have this heritage. I will be his God, and he will be my son. A voice says, Cry, and I say, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely people are grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or dis distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? 
As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anyone else in all creation will able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now unto him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now and forever. Amen. God bless you.